I didn't know if I missed one. Okay, uh, we'll move on. Public comments? Yes, first up is Veronica Langworthy. Hi, I'm Veronica Langworthy, resident of Wildemar. Um, I own property here and my family's here. And um, while a moratorium has been uh, temporary, temporarily enacted by the City Council, and it's in place through December of 2017, I would like to encourage the City Council to um, permanently ban marijuana cultivation, uh, marijuana processing, and uh, storefront distribution within the City of Wildemar as legally allowed. And um, I have a uh, study from the Heritage Foundation, Charles Stimson, Chief of Staff and Senior Legal Fellow. Marijuana trafficking is linked to a variety of crimes, from assault and murder to money laundering and smuggling. An astonishingly high percentage of criminals are marijuana users. According to a study by the RAND Corporation, approximately 60% of arrestees test positive for marijuana use in the United States England and Australia. <coughs> Further, marijuana metabolites are found in Orestes urine more frequently than those of any other drug. Although some studies have shown marijuana to inhibit aggressive behavior and violence, the National Research Council concluded that the long-term use of marijuana may alter the nervous system in ways that do promote violence. No place serves as a better example than Amsterdam. Marijuana advocates often point to the Netherlands as a well-functioning society with a relaxed attitude towards drugs, but they rarely mention that Amsterdam is one of Europe's most violent cities. In Amsterdam, officials are in the process of closing marijuana dispensaries or coffee shops because of the crime associated with their operations. Furthermore, the Dutch Ministry of Health, Welfare and Sport has expressed concern about drug and alcohol use among young people and the social consequences which range from poor school performance and truancy to serious impairment, including brain damage. Amsterdam's experience is already being duplicated in California under medical marijuana statute. In Los Angeles, police report that areas surrounding cannabis clubs have experienced a 200% increase in robberies, a 52.2% increase in burglaries, a 57.1% increase in aggravated assault, and 130.8% increase in burglaries from automobiles. The nuisance caused by the powerful odor of mature marijuana plants is already striking California municipalities. The City Council of Chico, California, has released a report detailing the situation and describing how citizens living near marijuana cultivators are disturbed by the incredible stink emanating from the plants. Perhaps worse than the smell of crime near growers is increasing associated with the theft of marijuana from yards where it is being grown. As a result, housing prices near growers are sinking. Arguments in favor of marijuana usually overlook the practical matter of how the drug will be regulated and sold. It's the details of implementation that will determine the effect of legalization on families, schools, and communities. Thank you. Next speaker is Ken Mays. On November 12, 2015, the City Council passed a resolution to set aside $75,000 to acquire a parcel of land to be used as a community garden. What has happened with that purchase using community development block grants? With less than two months left in the fiscal year, where are we? Is this purchase going to be another freedom swing where the city spends money so citizens can drive by and look at something locked up? Or will it be more like the East Side Park, a dirt lot with a foreseeable future benefiting no one? Camilla Townhouse Project needs to go away, as it is totally ba a bad fit for this community. At the rate things are going, Wildemar will be a terrible place to live. I have a question about the general plan maps in the back of the room. Are they available online, and if so, where? Last thing. Don't fall for the scare tactics. Legalize pot and reap the benefits. Thank you. Next speaker is Joseph Morabito. Good evening, Council. Tonight I'm wearing my T Now hat. Uh, for those that don't know, T Now stands for Transportation Now, and it's a subgroup of RTA. Um, I'm the 2017 chair of the Southwest chapter, which covers the six cities that make up Southwest Riverside County also known as City Manager Gary Nordquist's Magic Kingdom. We have members from each of the city councils that regularly attend, including Marcia Swanson from our own city of Wilmar. 
the point of tea now is to allow local transit issues to be discussed without them getting lost among many other transit concerns throughout the rest of the county. Uh, our stated goals are enhance customer <coughs> experience, promote ridership benefits, and enhance RTA's name recognition. The group meets on the last Wednesday of the month. Start time is 12 p.m. Lunch is provided, and it's uh, at rotating locations among the six cities. Part of my reason for speaking before you is to invite you to this month's meeting, which will be in Wildemar, uh, in this very council chamber. Um, another reason I'm up here is to tell you about an ongoing challenge that the Southwest chapter has recently initiated. The challenge is to invite the local city electeds and staff to ride uh, to take a bus ride within the city and then to report back. Well, I'll, I'll be the one doing the reporting back at the next meeting. So. Anyway, it's only May, so I hope that before the end of the year, I'll be able to get most of you on a bus uh, this month. Um, the Southwest Chapter of Tinao has a Facebook page, and all residents are invited to attend the meetings, and this page is the best way to know when the, the next one will be. And that's uh, facebook.com slash SWRivcoTNow. Thank you for your time. Oh, now let me put on my community agitator hat. <laughs> there, are a lot, uh, there are some people here um, for, for an in, uh, item not on the agenda, the Camilla Townhouse Project. Albeit this is a little bit of the cart before the horse, since this project still has to go through the planning commission before it could get to you, you can see that there are, I originally said many people concerned, but there are people concerned. They didn't quite show up like they said they were. Uh, Wildemar is a small place, and whoever votes on this issue, commissioners or council members, really need to drive by the area, and perhaps the developer will invite you out there. Though I doubt he wants you to see the pile of his cast-off toys, chairs, and other things that are still there. Um, perhaps some of the residents that will be affected by it will invite you to see it from their point of view. I understand why the developer wants it rezoned. He wants to make as much money with as little effort as he can. The thing is, what is your charge here? Are you here to facilitate his desire for more, or for as many units as possible, or is your charge to protect the interests of the city? Is that meeting May 17th? It's yeah. the fourth. The Wednesday. fourth. So, a couple things. One, uh, Kenny, if you go onto the city website under the planning page under departments, about two thirds of the way down, you can find a link right there to the general plan and land use map. So it's on the planning page. Um, and then, two, I would like to just put it out there I actually went and visited the backyards of about uh, three different residents up against that property this afternoon. So I've been out there and see your concerns. So I just want to put that out there. Next speaker is George Taylor. <laughs> Staff, Tom, are you are you considered a staff part of the staff? Okay, staff. Right. He tells us what to do, so I figure he's staff. He's more like dad. Great, <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, George Taylor, and I'm uh, speaking tonight as a director on the board of directors uh, for the Farm Property Owners Association, and I just wanted to talk to you a few minutes about the fact that uh, on the 29th of April, uh, the board of directors held their third annual. Um, volunteer recognition dinner. Uh, we had 13 tables uh, with eight uh, volunteers at each table. That amounts to about 104 volunteers, which our association needs to make it run. Uh, in addition to that, we had six uh, uh, members of the uh, fire department from uh, the Marietta Road uh, Station. I can't recall what the, uh, the number is. Uh, and then we had a sheriff's representative there. Uh, we held the program for a half an hour, hoping that, uh, that one of you guys would have been there, and we recognized the fact that Bridget had other uh, things, and your plane was, I guess, delayed, so... I was in San Francisco for 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> so at any rate, uh, hopefully, maybe somebody can get there next year, but uh, it, was a, it was a great night. Uh, uh, the, uh, the theme of it was the Phantom of the Opera. A lot of people came all dressed up with their masks and all the good stuff. And um, we had uh, some uh, uh, two ladies that uh, sung part of the uh, music from Phantom of the Opera, and it was a, it was a great evening. 
So you, unfortunately, you guys missed a, a good time. But I just wanted to, to let you know that, uh, that uh, uh, we're sorry you didn't get there, and, uh, and uh, we did. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Next speaker is Trudy Curry. speak on the variance request for the Camellia Communities Project. Um, I'll start by saying that the rolling hills of this property lead more to building of single-family rural homes than to high-density townhomes. I feel that there is plenty of land that would better suit this kind of project <coughs> described as the Camellia Communities Project. <coughs> as part of this townhome community, the plans include the extension of Jefferson <coughs> Avenue, a four-lane street, to connect with Palomar Street, a two-lane, windy rural road. This would create a traffic thoroughfare from Old Town Temecula through Murrieta, Wildemar, to Lake Elsinore. Much of this road is two lanes through Wildemar, which will lead to more traffic congestion during peak hours. Also, we have three schools along this route, and at least two child care facilities which have extensive congestion during the hours where children are dropped off or picked up by parents. If ever our city chooses to put in needed slower mileage for the safety of the students, it will slow the traffic further. It is not prudent to have 45 to 50 mile an hour traffic past our schools. While I understand that our city would benefit from additional tax dollars, from this project, I feel Wildemar can claim the same tax dollars with higher end rural homes on that property. While California continues to suffer from drought, this build would be a greater impact on our resources than a rural residential build. This project would not only impact traffic, the homeowners at Grizzly Ridge, but would impact Wildemar schools, police and fire response, traffic congestion, roads, drainage, lighting, city services, special assessments, and infrastructure. I believe that all the issues that come after this proposed project is built will cost the residents of Wildemar hundreds of thousands of dollars to fix. I will hope you will deny the variance for this project. Thank you. The next speaker is Pete Key. Keep key. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Council Members, uh, I spoke to you folks uh, once before. I've invited all of you to visit the site, particularly our homes. I want to thank Ben for doing so today. Uh, I'd like to remind you that invitation is still open. And if you don't have my cell phone, which I did give you, Ben has it. I'd like to also extend an invitation to Larry Markham, and included in that would be his architect. I'd like him to, uh, I understand he's working on improvements, trying to come up with a compromise. I'd like to see him on his next presentation show drawings from our yards, which you haven't seen. We've only seen your architectural drawings from the site. I'd like you to see if it looks like if you're not going to make it to our homes, I'd like to see that on the next presentation at the planning board meeting. Uh, I want to also thank the folks from Wildemar for the support that I've heard so far tonight. And it's uh, a lot of solidarity, and we're not going away, so we're going to stick with this. Just to, to let you know, I have visited your track in the project. I didn't knock on your door, but I could see your backyard even from the street. And see behind, um, we did the hills above and the houses, the other houses that looked down. Um, so you get a pretty good view from the street um, as to what's behind you there. I'd like to ask Ben for a comment on at least that. Do you, can you compare? I don't know if he can respond. I don't think he can. Yeah, this but, item yeah. isn't on the yeah. agenda. Right. 
then maybe I'd, I'd request you that you speak with him to see if there is a difference from the street here. Oh, I'm sure if it was right in the backyard, there would be. But like I said, from the street, I could from the pictures you brought, I could actually recognize your backyard. Yes. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the speakers that I have. Okay. I filled one out. <laughs> one down was mine. One down. On CSAs. Miss Miller, I'll fill it out again. On this, on this, uh, for just on, regular on, public comments. Yes. On items yes. not on the agenda. Uh, yes. They're important, so I'm going to fire up here. Wildemar has a major infection of the canola plant. <laughs> It would be profitable to clip them and make salad oil. However, just to get them down is going to be challenging enough. A small patch of canola on the south side of the Oak Springs apartments has entered behind the fence and what, where what's left of the historic oak groves that the terrible developer flattened and is running along the hillside. So the city, Riverside Habitat team, and small groups or developer needs to address canola before it spreads into the wash. And so we should have prayers for Jane Laskin from the Recycle Fashion Show and the philosophy of live where you work and love where you live. Beautiful philosophy, lovely lady. Then, where are the police when you need them? There were trucks and other loud vehicles going along in front of Oak Springs Apartments this evening. This town is so noisy now because you put so many people in here. And some of them have no respect nor regard for other people's hearing. And it just has to be stopped. It needs to be slowed down in more of a country town. So the police might be working with these people on re-infrastructuring their engines or whatever it is it lacks that we have to hear them screaming from the freeways and down the Clinton Key. And if there's going to be a recreation center anywhere in this town with an enclosed basketball court, maybe the north side of Marna O'Brien Park would be large enough, or buy two houses on the north side that are linked to the park, they're right next door, connect it with a basketball court, and it would be the same cost as building one, and you would be using an existing structure. So, let's see, we have a minute left. If we could love as much as angels, why wouldn't we have cared about the planet on which we stand by consuming less and loving more? If we could love as much as angels, then we would arrive sustainably without alarming noise, devolves from excessive horsepower and no limiting devices, but decibly we would not entertain ourselves with fossil fuels impure and blasting motorbikes over the desert floor for pleasure. Let's think of our earth. If we respected the earth as our home, we wouldn't support an administration that is opening the national parks for logging okay, and opening construction. Gas, you. oil, coal, drilling, spilling, care, killing for fossil fuels and breaking that environmental is all the rules. I have. <clears throat> okay, council communications. 